Debate about the only suspect in custody in connection with the deadly Benghazi attacks. Ahmed Abu Katala was picked up in Libya and at last reports being held and interrogated aboard the USS New York, which is on its way back to the United States. Let's talk first with Florida Republican Congressman Ron DeSantis. He's a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and a former flag officer. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for having me. All right, let's talk about Katala. What do you make of the decision to try him in civilian court? Uh, you're very familiar with Guantanamo Bay. There have been some who have called uh, for him to be transported and handled there. What do you make of the legal situation? Well, I disagree with that decision. I think that the important thing to understand, he's not entitled to any constitutional rights like an American citizen would be. This is a decision that the administration is kind of giving him more than what he's entitled to. And I think that's a mistake because our first uh, uh, thing we need to get out of him is intelligence about Ansar al-Sharia and the other terrorists who committed the Benghazi attack. I mean, uh, we were the last flag flying in Benghazi. They had attacked other people in that area, and we need to get that information. Once you put him in the criminal justice system, you start to have all these things attached where we're not going to be able to interrogate him the way we need to. Well, the White House and a number of key prominent Democrats have said uh, we've had great success. They point to the civilian trials we have had with terror suspects uh, and say that it's workable. It works better than Gitmo does. We have people detained there for years uh, without ever truly processing them. Um, how do you respond to that argument? I mean, is it time to change Gitmo to close it down? What do you make of it? Well, here's the thing. Prosecuting him, that's something that we need to do, but that's not the first order of business. The first order of business is getting intelligence, which is wholly apart from the criminal justice system. So yes, you probably could successfully prosecute him, but you're giving up the ability to get the maximum amount of intelligence out of this individual so that we can imply, uh, apply that with our assets in Libya and beyond so to keep up the fight against uh, Islamic extremism. All right, Congressman, I want to turn our attention to Iraq since we have you with us as well. Um, and as somebody who has served this country in, in multiple forms, including our military, and continue to, um, what do you make of what is happening there? Were you surprised at all by the quick advancement of ISIS, and what can we do, or should we be doing anything to stop them? Well, I was a little bit surprised at just how pathetic the Iraqi forces were. I mean, we've spent a lot of money and time training them. They had superior manpower and equipment. And to say that they folded like a cheap suit is really an insult to cheap suits. Um, at the same time, I am very much opposed to the idea that somehow we have an interest alongside Iran in ensuring a quote unquote stable Iraq. Iran does not want a stable Iraq with a representative government. Iran once an area where they can ex exert their own influence. Um, and so we got to be careful. Both sides right now, I think, are contrary to our national interests. And I don't think we should be picking one side over another. Because when I was in Iraq, you had a lot of Shia terrorists and Iran's Quds Force who were killing a lot of American service members. And I don't think we should forget that. What do you make of the administration's decision to send over some 300 advisors? We're not exactly who, sure who they are and what they'll be doing. And, and uh, as General Keene mentioned earlier, maybe that's best for their own safety. But as far as legal protections for them, um, since we really never were able to negotiate a, a final status of forces agreement there um, it, it, with respect to, you know, protecting another group coming in like this, these 300 additional, um, what do you think their role will be and will they be safe? Well, it's hard to tell. I mean, any time we put boots on the ground, uh, most of the people who are on the ground are support, uh, and then you have a very small number who are actually the tip of the spear. So with 300, uh, that's a very, very small number. And, and again, I think if our, if our goal is to somehow say that we're going to take the side of some of the Shia groups who are fighting ISIS, I think that would align us with Iran, and I just don't think that that's something uh, that is smart. Iran, in their pursuit of a nuclear weapon, is still the number one national security problem uh, that we have. Um, so I, 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 we just haven't been given enough information at this point to know exactly what their role is going to be. Congressman DeSantis, thank you, sir, for your service and for your time today as well. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right.